You guys, now it's time for today's guests. Patrick McEnroe and Melissa Errico are a power couple in the world of sports, arts, and entertainment. You may know Melissa from her career as a singer and Patrick as an ESPN commentator and former Davis Cup captain. Here to chat about the U.S. Open and more is Patrick McEnroe and Melissa Errico. <laughs> Nice to see you. Good to see you. Thanks Pleasure. for having us. You're welcome. Hello, ladies. Guys. Nice to see you. How you doing? Can't complain. Good. Can't We're good. Complain. Nice. Thanks for joining us. It's good to be here. It's a nice happen a little scene you got here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there it is. Our fans. Yeah. You're, you like a spatula. Absolutely. Oh, we, yeah. <laughs> we might have to take those. So Melissa doesn't cook much. You know you cook. So. You cook <laughs> right. We're already the crazy mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's our job. Are these, are these to be chosen from? Yeah, you yeah. can take okay. one. Um, well, no. we can we can talk while we while can talk later. Talk okay. about that. Yeah. But tell us about the U.S. Open. What you're most excited for? Well, the U.S. Open has um, become a huge entertainment uh, mm -hmm. event in addition to a great tennis event. I mean, I grew up in Queens. So I used to go to the West Side Tennis Club in Forest Hills and move to Flushing Meadow. Now there's this incredible new roof over the center court. There's lots of outside courts as well, and. You know, the best players in the world all come. The mm -hmm. difference for us this year at ESPN is we're actually covering the qualifying event, mm -hmm. which is going on this week. So I go straight from here, go out, and we're on the air all day long covering the qualifying. The main draw of the U.S. Open starts on Monday. Right. And I'm curious, as a pro tennis player yourself, what it's like then kind of going to the other side and commenting on it. Are you ever like, I want to get in there? I never I never lose, no. Right? Yeah, that's you know? true. That's Unfortunately, true. I lost a lot when I had to play. <laughs> so people ask me all the time, do you still uh, do you still play tennis? I said, yes, just not for money. Because okay. if I did, I'd be broke. <laughs> so a lot, a lot easier to commentate on tennis, a lot yeah. more fun. Um, and you know how long you're going to be there. Because as a tennis player, when you book your plane tickets, you always have to have what we call an open return. Yeah. You never know when you're coming back. Right. But now I know I'll be there till the very last day commentating. Now, so. we've been married over 20 years. And I met him when I was five. We all grew up in Long Island together, the two of us. But he used to literally like go to Hamburg or go to Rome or go anywhere, and I or Australia, and I'd be like, okay, bye. It's a two week. He'd be back, you know, a day later. <laughs> you know, no, not always. Not always. No, not always. Not always. But I mean, it could happen. So you never know. Now I know. You know, it's yeah. the whole time to the last bowl. Melissa was an amazing coach because she said to me one day I was practicing. She was watching. She, oh my God. She was learning about tennis at that point. These she are said, the embarrassing stories. Just hit the ball over the net into In the within lines. the lines. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that sounds like pretty good advice. That easy. If it's it's that easy. So you guys, right. he would yeah. play at yeah. Australian Open when we were really young, and I had big hat. I had just starred in My Fair Lady on Broadway, and I was like, "Oh, this tennis player, his mother had set us up again. This is like an arranged marriage." <laughs> and and uh, I was sitting in the stands at the at the Australian Open, big hat, my like one of these type of dresses and stuff. It was my mom, and I kept cheering for him. And he was playing against a young. I was unknown. getting my you know what kicked yeah. at the time. Carlos Moya. We didn't. No one knew who he was at the time, <laughs> and um, I was cheering because he won like a point, you know, and I and. He he turned and goes, shh, like this. There were like, you know, 20,000 people watching. Right. Whatever. None of them wow. cheering but for me at that point. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. You were doing well. No, I was doing so okay. I came at the end of his career. But. I was cheering for it because I was really getting beaten pretty soundly. Carlos Moya is now Rafael Nadal's coach. Right. But at the time, he was like the up-and-comer. I was uh, coming back from a shoulder surgery, so I was not at my best. And Carlos was giving me a beating. So I was, you know, <laughs> was close to the end of the match. And I was like, just get me out of here. This yeah. is embarrassing. Um, but she was a good wife. Like, she weren't married yet at the time, but she's been with me ever since. We've been together ever since. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. amazing. Only like men and women have these stories of, you know, I shushed it. He shushed it. I've been with him And we're still here, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Really we're romantic. still here. Um, and Melissa, you're performing the national anthem, right, at the U.S. Open? I've done that a, a lot. It's something I oh, like so to this do. this is old hat. Well, no, you never take the anthem for granted because mm -hmm. it is such a uh, bizarre song to sing. And, yeah, you don't want to uh, you, you don't yeah, mess you that up. You never want to be like, yeah, I got this. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, or maybe you do. Yeah. You might make more yeah. news. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No bad press. Are you excited? When will you be performing it? Um, I am excited to do it, but I don't remember when oh, I'm Labor performing day. it. It's Labor Day. Week from Monday. Yeah, yeah, Labor Day. Labor Day weekend's a big middle. We call it the middle weekend of the U.S. Open. So it's a big... Uh, 
you know, the final weekend of summer, the, the always, U.S. Open ends the following <laughs> Sunday, so okay. Labor Day. I always volunteer to do it because it kind of connects me and Pat and the things I like, you know, singing and the yeah. tennis. But I remember when I first did it at the at the uh, big stadium, um, I really tried, you know, I'm a theater actress, so I, I, I really made it clear and someone screamed, of course, oh my God, you sang the anthem for the first time. I understood it. Because <laughs> 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 I was like, and the flag was still there. Right. I'm trying to explain, there's a whole thing, the bombs, there's still a the flag. Words Count. Yeah, yeah, the actual, I like, and under like, <laughs> And obviously you mentioned that you are this amazing Broadway singer and you have this album, Sondheim Sublime, which has just gotten such great reception. So what does that feel like when people really receive the work that you're putting out there? Oh, thank you. Um, this project, of all the things I've done in, you know, since I started my career, this is one of the most heartfelt and... Um, loved and really clear projects. I really knew what I wanted to accomplish. I've worked with Stephen Sondheim and in his musicals three different times. They were the most exciting musicals I'd ever been in. But then I, to make an album of his music, I knew what I wanted to say. It is Sondheim is like a castle, imagine, and I just took you down one wing. Yeah. It's the sublime, it's the, the words of wisdom. So I'm very proud of it, and thank you. It's just like, that one really came from my heart, and it's, some, it's funny how people can really tell when you really yeah. worked hard on something. And, and if people get it, it nothing feels better. Like, so like she, she didn't know a lot about tennis, okay, mm -hmm. when we started. I didn't know, honestly, that much about theater, but one of the first things I did was we were driving to Washington, D.C., to the Kennedy Center, where she did uh, a Sunday in the Park with George, one of the famous Sondheim shows. They were performing lots of his uh, musicals that summer at the Kennedy Center. So I started to learn about Sondheim and all that he meant to the musical theater, et cetera. But one thing I remember from that trip was pulling out inside the Kennedy Center and a car parked and the bumper sticker said, Sondheim or bust. Right. <laughs> and I said, here we are. Now I'm really yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah. I'm really in the Hardcore, theater. So like learned a lot about it and she just lives it and uh, you know, some amazing songs and uh, she put her heart and soul into yeah. the record. It's that's awesome. why it's so special because his music is something so many people know and connect to. So for them to receive you singing like that must just mean a lot. Yeah, and yeah. The, I mean, for anyone who's learning about Sondheim, uh, the, the, you can live by Sondheim. Mm -hmm. You can actually live the words to live by. Stop worrying where you're going, move on. If you can know where you're going, you've gone, just keep moving on. Those are lyrics. I mean, yeah. the, everything you need really, I think, to live the big questions. The answers are there, That's I think. Deep. In Sondheim, yeah, I, I, now that it we is have deep. three kids, three girls to take <laughs> care of, we gotta all, live it. <laughs> We're living it every day, baby. <laughs> 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 um, and you also are re-releasing -re La Grande Affair. I am, actually. Yes. Yes. So what can fans expect from that album? Well, Michel Legrand was one of the great uh, film composers, and I did do his only Broadway show. Um, and he passed away in January, and I work now uh, occasionally for the New York Times, and I was able to write his appraisal in the New York Times. And um, that just began a, a kind of a, a, a thread of my doing a lot of tribute work. Mm -hmm. I sang in Paris, and I sang in San Francisco in his honor. And then Warner Music decided to re-release our record we made together. But the beautiful thing is that um, uh, I have his last song that mm -hmm. he ever wrote with the Bergmans, and I'm going to be doing some stuff with uh, Russ Malone, one of the great gu jazz guitarists in America. Wow. So we're going to put the, re the release uh, is coming out, sort of the old stuff that we did symphonically, but also some new material as well. And, and believe, it or, believe it or not, when he, Michelle Legrand first came here to work with Melissa. Just a few blocks from Yeah, here. we lived down the street here on Lafayette Street. It was our first apartment. We lived in the city before we had to make the move to the burbs, the <laughs> dreaded burbs. But she's still... <laughs> wants to kill me about. No. But Michelle Legrand came to our apartment, played the piano. They made tapes uh, and demos. And, and we were just re-listening to it in the last oh. couple of weeks. It's, it's amazing. It's phenomenal we're stuff. We're putting the and demos out as well. Oh, so you're going to hear Michelle saying, Melissa, I'm free. <laughs> Try these. This is the guy who won all these Oscars. Barbara Streisand's career mm -hmm. is, is, is completely entangled with Michelle Legrand. I know. Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. we have demos where he was teaching me the music. And you can hear his French voice. And you can hear him. So I'm releasing that intimate material as well. Cool. Because what you'll see is you'll see Michelle Legrand, who freely went from from pop music, you know, he wrote what people would say are additives to what's called the Great American Songbook. Mm -hmm. These are really standards. And he's one of the few modern composers that wrote things that will last forever. No offense, but a lot of music we all listen to right now, you're never gonna hear it again. No. This stuff will last forever, as well as Gershwin and Cole Porter. Anyhow, you can hear how he plays as if a standard, but then he goes 
instantly into classical music, mm. the way he was playing for me, instantly into real heavy jazz. The man was so free. Yeah. And my demos, because he didn't feel the pressure to make a recording, you see him go, da -da -da -da, and then da -da -da -da, <laughs> and suddenly jazz. So you're going to hear him playing for me and talking to me, but moving quickly through genres. Yeah. It's a genius, genius that's unparalleled. Yeah. Yeah. And he took us uh, with him on his own plane. He had this small plane. He used to fly himself in France. <laughs> and he took us to Spain, where he had this summer place, after they did their record. And um, literally, we were flying over the Pyrenees, just him. And he was like, he you know, flew us. He over. was probably seven, <laughs> early seventies at the time. So I was like, I think Great. we're safe. Yeah, <laughs> and and um, he used to he used to yell at me in the afternoon, Patrick, Patrick, we must get the fish. We must go get the fish. <laughs> so I, we would drive, we get in his car, in a small Spain. town in Spain. So we had to go right then to get the fish. Mm -hmm. And he was a pretty darn good tennis player too, oh, Michelle Legrand. Right. We used to wow. I played so tennis. He could do with everything. Him. Wow. He was amazing guy, <laughs> incredible man. Yeah. Do, do you guys? Can you guys do your your others' respective careers? Like, can you sing? Can you play tennis? Or you just keep it separate? We just played tennis the other day. We were on <gasps> vacation. Yeah. I know. You're I did it a lot more when we were dating. I think her tennis <laughs> is a little better than my singing. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, her tennis is, I like to sing, but I try to do it privately. Okay, cool, yes. cool. Yeah. And you, you mentioned you've known each other almost your whole entire lives. Exactly. So yes. when, how did you actually meet? Like what, well, we there? went to grade school together, and actually her older brother was my best friend all through grade school out in Long Island. And so we knew each other all through those years of going from, you know, kindergarten, first grade through eighth grade. And then I left Dorky. that school, <laughs> so went cute. to school, another high school in the, in, in the city. Um, but our parents actually stayed really good friends, and her brother and I sort of stayed connected through high school. And then uh, when I came back, actually, from playing tennis, uh -huh. I had hurt my shoulder, so I had to have surgery. I was out of playing for a while, and I said, oh, i got to find some things to do here in New York. I lived uptown, <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, I, ran, I, I, found, well, I found her brother's, her brother's postcard, because he's a singer-songwriter. Went downtown to go see him play, my mother had been saying to me for years, you've got to see Melissa, she's gorgeous. We see her in all her shows, and I knew nothing about Broadway, as I told you. But lo and behold, there she was at her brother's gig. Yeah. That was town. it, we were the done. Rest, the rest was history. We were wow. done. Wow. We 20, went to the Corner 20 Bistro. 20-something years ago. Yeah. yeah, we went to the Corner Bistro that yeah. night, and we were out all night. I mean, we were out really late. You can get a hamburger there at 2 in the morning, yeah. right. easy, probably still, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Yeah, we were done. Good burger, too. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that's really good. That's really good. I love that. That's so cute. Yeah. We so here good. we are. And yeah. Melissa, you write for the New York Times. That's so cool. So could you tell us any of your upcoming pieces? I do have one coming up. Um, I think I can tell you what it's about. Yeah, who cares? I'll tell you yeah. what it's about. Yeah, let's do that. Um, let's get in trouble. It, it's on the, I think I can do that. I can do yeah, that. You yeah, you can do it. Um, I have been working since March on my first sort of more journalistic. It's not so much my. I've been the, art, the essays I've been writing have been about um, what it's like to be an actress for 20, 30 years in show business. The first one I did was about aging. To which my manager promptly said, please don't put your age in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but that's the whole point. But yeah. OK. Um, it ended up being, by the way, the title, my age, because the, you don't do your own titles in the New York Times. And they oh. called me. They're like, by the way, we just, we've been running. Anyway, they, they, they broke the news to me. And I said, that's fine. That's fine. But um, so I began trouble, doing yes. these essays that were like about from my personal experience on certain topics. But this one is not my opinion. So it's my first time being a journalist. Oh. And I went out since March. I've been interviewing interviewing the business about auditions mm. and the, the way auditions have changed and the role of technology in our auditions and self-taping. Mm. Because now we're not auditioning for people. It used to be, look, in my era, we would see the people who didn't like us or who liked us. We could see the positivity. We could see we weren't nailing it. We could see what their dream world was, that we were in ha Now we don't know what we're doing. We don't have the script. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know the character. We self-tape in our house. We have to be good cinematographers. We have to know how to do all this and all this hair and makeup yeah. business that nobody used to do. I, I have my hair done today. I never used to do this. I'd come and interview, look like whatever. Yeah. I did it myself, you know. Now everything has to be just so. Same with auditions. So you have to have perfect lighting. Do it yourself and then send it to a fleet so of people right. that are anonymous. Oh. You don't know who they are don't like you yeah. or you don't get it. <laughs> they say you're not right for the part. Who said I'm not We're right for the part? We're going in another direction. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I'm not right for the part says who? Mm -hmm. I never met these people. Sorry, <laughs> I miss you. I, you know, I don't... You, so anyway, I wrote about... Um, that, but by asking other people their opinions yeah. and their experiences. Mm. I asked a lot of actors how they feel about this new world, where we're auditioning without meeting people, where all of us are doing everything by technology. Mm. And how are we 
being artists if we're always branding ourselves and having to be experts at other things like cinematography, branding, lighting, stylist, colors, yeah. be a stylist. Yeah. I'm an actor. Can the rest be someone else's job? <laughs> you know, that's my opinion, but yeah. not everyone. Yeah. Some people yeah. like it. Yeah. Some people like it. Yeah. They think it's snappy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I think self tapes are some of the worst things you have to do as an actor because you don't get any feedback and mm -hmm. you're in a room alone and you're like, should I try this differently? Like, yeah. you make a choice and there's no director to be like, but I was thinking about this. Right. Yeah, and, and then you go, oh, I see, I see. And then yeah. you adjust and then in minutes you you may be on a, you know, on a success track. The interesting thing I think about this piece is that a lot of the people she spoke to are in the business, the actors, some of them love it. Some of them felt it was really freeing for them. Some of them, like you said, hate it because they don't get that you know, in the room with other people. So, gonna be a big piece. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to I, don't, I hope I didn't just yeah. give it away. No, 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 no. Okay. no. Yeah, It's called a but, tease. But, okay, that's a tease. Patrick, yeah. Patrick yeah. Melissa, thank you and guys so much. And it's September 1st. Thank you for having us. I'll take okay. the avocados, okay? Yes, me too! Okay, see? There we go. Everyone, make sure to check out Patrick's commentary on ESPN and Melissa's re-release of La Affair out this fall.